Hello everyone and welcome back to Per La Victoire. I recently made a dress out of crinkle rayon fabric. This was a new to me fabric and it came with some interesting challenges and I'm very excited to share with you today everything I learned while working with this fabric. So what is crinkle rayon fabric? Rayon is a semi-synthetic fiber made of cellulose or wood pulp and crinkle refers to the texture of the finished fabric. So the fabric is mechanically treated to have a lot of wrinkles and texture to it. It really does look like it's been scrunched up and then kind of mechanically pressed in place to keep that scrunched texture. You might have seen this fabric in sundresses or blousey tops. Crinkle rayon fabric is soft and drapey. It flows really well. It gathers beautifully. I feel like it gathers so well because the fabric already has like this scrunched up texture so it just it condenses into gathers really really nicely. Now it's important to keep in mind that because of the wrinkle texture of crinkle rayon fabric the fabric will stretch along both the warp and the weft especially as you wear the garment and your body heat kind of relaxes some of those wrinkles, you may notice that your garment starts to stretch and sag a little bit. I find that comparing crinkle rayon to a rayon chalet or a rayon crepe, it feels heavier than those two fabrics. Now that could just be this particular fabric. I got this crinkle rayon fabric from Joann's and I'll leave a link to this particular fabric in the description box below. But I feel like Maybe because there's more fabric condensed per square inch, square yard uh, from the wrinkling process, it feels like there's just more fabric around. It feels kind of thick and soft. Uh, probably wouldn't be the best fabric for a summer dress if you live in a really hot and humid climate, especially because that heat and humidity is going to make those wrinkles relax further and thus make the garments stretch more along your body. Probably not something you want to happen while you're wearing a perfectly fitted garment is for it to stretch and sag all over the place on a hot day. So let's talk about treating a crinkle rayon fabric. I washed this fabric on a cold, gentle cycle in my washing machine along with other white clothes. I washed this piece of fabric inside of a mesh garment bag. That way I didn't have to worry about sewing together the ends of the fabric or hemming them or serging them or something to keep the ends from fraying. I actually only had two yards of fabric to work with and that was barely enough to make a long sleeve dress anyway, so I didn't want to lose any fabric at all in the washing process. I also felt like by washing this fabric in one of those mesh garment bags that I prevented the fabric from stretching or distorting unnecessarily. Normally when I wash yardage it has a tendency to get wrapped around the central unit of my washing machine and I especially did not want that to happen to this fabric since it is so prone to stretching and distorting. I wanted to keep the grain as preserved as possible. So by folding it up nicely in the little mesh baggie, it just kind of kept everything in order, in place, and kept it from getting all tangled up in my clothes in my washing machine. And then to dry the fabric, I very carefully laid it out on an indoor folding drying rack. I really don't tend to put my clothes in the dryer anyway, so I already had my drying rack out for the other clothes that I washed in the load that I washed this fabric in. So I just went and laid the fabric very carefully over that drying rack, just making sure that there weren't any parts of the fabric that were pulling or stretching or otherwise distorting the fabric. And once my fabric was dry, I gently ironed it on the medium setting with my iron. It was so interesting to see that as I ironed it, the heat of the iron actually relaxed and flattened out some of that wrinkle texture. And then as soon as the fabric came back up to room temperature, the crinkles kind of came up again. It's really sensitive to the heat, but it also goes back to its default setting pretty quickly. So something to keep in mind is if you do want your fabric to be as flat as possible before you start cutting out your pattern pieces, probably not the best idea to iron it days or weeks before you're going to cut it out because it is going to relax back to its crinkled state in the meantime. So I recommend pressing this fabric right before you cut it, right before you sew it at each step because it just shrinks right back into its textured state so quickly. When designing your crinkle rayon fabric garment, there are some key features you want to avoid because of the nature of the fabric. The biggest thing is you don't want anything that's going to use interfacing. No collars, no cuffs, waistbands, plackets, all of that is going to be a nightmare, if not impossible to achieve on this fabric. The interfacing will not stay glued onto the bumpy texture of the fabric. You can try to use a sew-in interfacing, 
but you're really going to struggle to get the kind of crisp look if you have a pointed collar or a set of stiff cuffs. It's going to be so difficult to work with, so I recommend just steering clear of those features. I'd also recommend avoiding garments that have a lot of buttons or buttonholes. Now imagine this fabric stretches and shrinks really easily and quickly, so if you have lots of buttons in your garment, especially large buttons, heavy buttons, metal buttons, they're going to pull on the fibers of the garment. They're going to stretch out that textured um, material and they are going to lead to a very saggy button plaque area. Definitely not the kind of thing you want to see front and center of the garment you work so hard on. It's going to make it really difficult to fit because the way that the material sags and stretches in certain areas. So you also want to avoid lots of fitted garments. Um, anything with lots of seam lines or darts, it's going to be really difficult to get kind of that crisp intersecting seam lines and precision. I think of garments like 1940s dresses that have lots of beautiful seam work and um, seams where the seam allowance is folded to the inside and then the seam is beautifully top stitched. That's going to be really difficult to achieve on this fabric because of the way it stretches so easily and because it's kind of bumpy, it's going to be really difficult to get like nice, clean, even, straight seams. I found that it was a little bit easier to get good straight seams by sewing along um, the selvage edge of the fabric. The crinkle texture was mostly parallel to the selvage. So when I was sewing the side seams of this dress, it was very easy to sew them up. I didn't get a lot of stretching. I didn't get a lot of warping. But when I was sewing the hem of this dress, which went across the selvage, I was getting a wavy texture to my hem, and it was fine because it was on the hem. I think it looks cute. But all things to consider, if you're gonna have lots of intersecting seams and darts, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. The other problem with darts in this fabric is that because the fabric relaxes with time and with your body heat, you may find that the dart moves downwards. I tissue fit my pattern and the dart was in the right spot at the right angle and then I laid the panel of fabric over my body once I had stitched on the darts and the side seams and again it was perfect. The dart was perfectly aligned and pointing perfectly and then a few hours after I wore my uh, finished dress the dart point was just like mm -hmm, and gone quite a bit lower than I had planned. Here are some features you might want to consider when designing your crinkle rayon fabric project. Consider something that is very loose fitting and flowy. Think summer tops, dresses, skirts, ruffles, things that are drapey and flowy and loose fit. I think are going to work really well with this fabric. You'll want to consider garments that have few seams and design features. In this dress, for example, I chose a shift dress pattern that didn't have a waist seam, and instead to cinch the waist, I used a piece of elastic covered in the dress fabric that I put on after I put the dress on. So pick a, a garment that doesn't have a lot of seams, it's a loose fit, something that can be belted or cinched. And lastly, consider something with elastic or shirring, especially since shirring is so popular this season. I see a lot of shirred tops and dresses, and it's a fun and easy technique to do. I ended up using some narrow quarter inch wide elastic in the cuffs of the sleeves of this dress, and I feel like that worked really well with this pattern. Any kind of elastic or shirring details for achieving that good fit since it's gonna be more difficult to use seams and darts, I think is the way to go. And this fabric gathers beautifully, so consider design elements that take advantage of that gathering. Maybe a puff sleeve or a little gathered ruffle. This fabric is gonna lay so nicely when it's gathered. Now, how would you sew with crinkle rayon fabric? Probably the most important thing to consider here are your seam finishes. Unfortunately, this fabric does fray a lot, so if you have a serger, now would be the time to use it. I don't have a serger, so instead I chose to use French seams. I wouldn't recommend something like a flat felt seam. Again, trying to get those neat, even lines of stitching might be a bit of a challenge. I would avoid using pinking shears to finish the seams of crinkle round fabric garments. Those pinking shears aren't going to make a difference at all. The fabric is still going to shred and fray uncontrollably. It's it's a bit of a mess on some of the samples that I tried. Anytime I um, 
start sewing with a new fabric. I always sew a few test samples, especially to test out my seam finishing techniques. And boy, the pinking shears one was not great. I think it would also be helpful to stay stitch any necklines or armholes to help prevent them from stretching out. I didn't do that on this dress, and I got the feeling that there was a little bit of stretching, but due to the drapey, flowy, loose fit nature of this garment, I don't think it makes much of a difference if the armhole is a little bit stretched out, but I would recommend uh, you do it. I would definitely do it the next time I work with this kind of fabric. I felt like it was just so easy, no matter how slowly and carefully I was going, even though I had um, a finer needle in my sewing machine, the fabric just wanted to stretch out. And lastly, based everything, pins slide right out of this fabric because of its loose, crinkled texture. It is impossible to keep a pin in. Just me moving from the ironing board to the sewing machine, I had a shower of pins falling all over the floor. So instead what I would do is immediately after I had pinned my pieces together, I would go in and just sew a basting stitch. There was just no way I could have sewed this fabric and kept it straight <laughs> um, and even without that basting because it slides around a lot. The pins fall out because of the loose weave, the fabric stretches, so you just need that extra security that basting is going to provide. Now I'd like to share with you a few details on what I made with my crinkle rayon fabric. I think this is a really cute dress for spring and fall. When I saw this fabric in the store, I absolutely loved it, even though I was a little bit cautious about the textile, I just knew it had to be a spring fall dress. I ended up using lots of different elements and pattern pieces and kind of hacking things to fit my vision and also to fit my fabric restrictions since I only had exactly two yards. So for this fabric, I decided that I wanted an A-line dress with a hem ruffle, bishop sleeves, and a little neckline tie to take advantage of this soft, flowy material. To make the dress, I actually used Macal's 7800. This is a great pattern for a shift dress. It's fitted with bust darts, the pattern has a center back seam and then a little closure at the top of the neck, a button or a zipper. I eliminated that center back seam and instead cut my back pieces on the fold and just removed the extra seam allowance. And I didn't use any of the sleeve views in this pattern. They seem just way too structured and funky for this fabric and they had extra seams in them. I wanted to reduce um, any kind of seam allowance exposure as much as possible. So for the sleeves, I used the sleeves of View B and View D from Macal's 7973. I absolutely love this pattern. You'll be seeing a video in the future with a few different versions I've made of it recently. And I loved the way that this puffed bishop sleeve fit. I really appreciated that I already had an elastic cuff, which worked really well for this fabric and for this style of dress. So as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to reduce the amount of seam allowances that were showing inside my dress, and because the fabric is a little bit light, I was worried it would be a bit see-through, I decided to fully line it. So I just cut an identical version of the dress from Macal 7800 out of some pink polyester lining fabric that I've had for like 10 years. It's really soft. I always destined it for pajamas or slips or something. That's what it reminds me of. It's like a polyester charmeuse. So the dress is fully lined in that little pink polyester fabric. Because I was fully lining the dress, I didn't really need the separate neckline facing piece that this pattern comes with. Instead, I just traced out the V slit of the dress right onto my lining. I basted everything together and then I sewed that V slit. I wanted to try another new technique and make some little rouleau loops out of this yellow fabric and sew them into this join of the V-neck slit um, as I was sewing the lining and the outer fabric together along the neckline. So that way I could choose to wear this dress tied together closed or undo the ties and kind of have it open as a v-neck and show that contrast to lining fabric. I really appreciate the extra versatility that these ties gave me. Even though it was so difficult to turn out rouleau from this loose woven fabric, I actually made some holes in these rouleau loops as I was turning them out. So after I finished turning them out, I had to go and like hand stitch almost the entire length of the loop and mend those holes closed. 
what a journey it was. So maybe the rouleau isn't the best option for this kind of fabric because it's so loosely woven that almost anything you stick up there, even if it's a dull pencil, is just gonna go right through the fibers of the fabric. The most difficult part of making this dress is making these little loops. When I sewed the lining of my dress, I made sure to turn the seam allowances of the armholes towards the inside and then I hand stitch those seam allowances over the sleeve armhole seam here just to make sure that all those raw edges are fully enclosed. I really wanted to include a gather detail on this dress and kind of visually split up this fabric into thirds so I cut the outer layer of fabric a bit shorter about 10 inches shorter than the pattern recommended and use that extra 10 11 inches of length to create a ruffle that was 1.5 times the width of the circumference of the hem of the dress and then i stitched that ruffle on and then just top stitched again to make sure it was fully secure and not the seam allowance wasn't flopping around anywhere and i think this ruffle is a great detail i like to swish around in it and as i mentioned earlier in order to cinch in the dress i just made a matching elastic belt it's literally a piece of half inch wide elastic that's sewn into a big tube made of the dress fabric and I can pull this on after I put on the dress and to me it kind of looks like the dress has its own elastic waist but if I remove the elastic belt then the dress is back to being a shift dress. This also makes it a bit more versatile. I can wear any of my other belts now with this dress and not have the additional bulk um, pressing up against me of the elastic waistband. I can just remove the elastic belt and put on a normal belt. So I think this little feature is pretty cool and I might uh, incorporate this into some future projects as well. Just have a separate matching belt, not have a fitted dress and then just adjust the fit of the dress after it's on. I know I'll get a lot of use out of this dress. Now I know how to wash and care for this fabric and I feel confident in tackling this crinkle rayon fabric again. I hope you do as well and I hope you learned something from this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in my next video.